When the 3070 was launched, it was released kind of as a competitor to the 2080 Ti. And yes, I said competitor. It doesn't appear that it was ever designed to be a replacement or necessarily even an upgrade, more of a substitute at a much lower price, which does seem like a win considering the 2080 Ti was a $1,200 card and the 3070 was essentially supposed to be a $500 GPU. Now, mind you, it only took two years for it to actually reach MSRP again, and it's still struggling to do that. So the question we have today is, is it still worth it two years later on the cusp of everything else coming out for the next generation? So we're gonna revisit it and try to help answer some of those questions. What's up guys, my name is Juan and you're watching my channel, Blueprint PC. If this is your first time, welcome, a return viewer, Welcome back. You've made this mistake before and I can no longer help you. But in this video, I am going to try to help you in another way. We're talking about the 3070 and I'm going to try to answer three main questions. One, does it still perform well today? We're on the cusp of the next generation coming out and it's two years after launch and multiple driver updates and we're going to see how well it performs and it still kind of, you know, reaches our expectations of what we are hoping it to be now that we can actually buy them. Two, if you're in the market now and you're really considering a 3070, I'm going to help you determine what would be potentially a good price point to buy it and a few other factors to consider. Three, if you already have a GPU and now it's time to upgrade, you're like, hey, you know what? They're affordable now and I'd really like to have some more performance. We're going to talk about what card you start with and when it's potentially a good time to upgrade. So if you have a 1060, a 2070 or an RX 5700 XT, is this a viable option to look at? So we're gonna try to answer all three of those questions today and hopefully help you out if you're in need. To clarify on my earlier comments about it being more of a competitor, I want you to understand a few things. One, when the 2080 Ti came out, that was a flagship card. That was the top tier. The 3070 is a mid-tier card and it does trade blows with the 2080 Ti. It doesn't just turn into an outright slaughter. It's, again, it's competitive. The 2080 Ti has more VRAM. It has 12 gigabytes of VRAM versus the 3070 having eight, which is, it's still enough. Now don't let that fool you though. The 3070 has a couple tricks up its sleeve. It has next generation RT cores and tensor cores. So you're naturally gonna get a little bit better ray tracing performance and DLSS performance is going to be boosted as well. So where it does lack in the VRAM category, it does make up for in a lot of other ways, especially if, again, if you are a fan of ray tracing and you're comfortable with that 2080 Ti kind of performance. The model I have for you today is the Asus Strix. This is probably one of the best versions of a 3070 that you can buy the market. The cooler on this sucker is freaking chonky. It is a triple slot cooler, even though it only has two slots right here, but it's triple fan, it's triple slot. It is freaking huge, it's heavy, it's big, which can be a problem depending on your case, but it's also a very similar cooler, if not the same, that's found in the 3090 Strix. So it handles a 3070 extremely well. It's not without flaws, which we'll get to after the benchmarks, and you'll see the temps in the benchmarks. So let's go ahead and let's carry on. All right, before I jump into the benchmarks, quick disclaimer, one, do my benchmarks at low, medium, and high settings. Default settings, no tweaks, no adjustments, not very low, not super high, ultra badass nightmare, none of that stuff. And I also use what I consider an average gamer's test bench. It's designed to be a more realistic version of what most gamers have out there and are actually playing games on. Not everybody can afford the high-end 12900K, soon to be 13900KS, you know, type of systems on LN2 overclock to, you know, the high heavens and whatnot. So I give you more of a realistic, real-world grounded result to show you what the raw performance of this card can do in a broader spectrum of systems out there. Now, I don't use RT or DLSS unless specified in the benchmarks, but let's go ahead, enough talk, let's jump in benchmarks.
Now that we've seen the benchmarks, it's really not hard to see how well this card performs. I mean, like I said, at some point, we probably all dreamed about having a 2080 Ti, and this sits right up there next to it. Now, before we jump into the questions, I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this. For one, reviewing this card in 1440p, and two, comparing it to an RX 6700 XT, which I think you guys are really gonna to wanna to see that. It'll be helpful, I promise. Number one, does it perform well? Well, it's simple, it's obvious. Yes, it does. It's, yes, considered a mid-tier card, but again, it's comparable to the previous generation's flagship card. So it performs well, hands down. There's no question about that. Yes, there is stuff higher that's more expensive that performs better but for what it's designed to do it hits the mark now like i said before this is a prime example of the 3070 and honestly all 3070s are going to perform within a reasonable amount compared to this one yes this has a beefy cooler on it and it's triple fan but even a dual fan two slot cooler design will probably be within five to ten percent of this depending on the game that ten percent is going to be more in like some very very demanding scenarios and in like a really poorly designed case that has restricted airflow and it's going to run hot and start down clocking that's where we're going to start seeing that bigger delta of the ten percent gap for performance but realistically most triple fan like at least dual slot or triple slot versions of these cards you're going to be within two to three percent realistically and i'm not even saying there's not some out there that probably outperform this just depending on design but overall they're all going to perform fairly close to this getting into temps you guys obviously saw that it does perform very well there's i i even think in a very choked out case you're going to have good temperatures you might get into like the mid 70s in a really 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 crappy case but even then that is plenty fine the card's gonna have plenty of headroom and it's gonna still consider to boost like rather well when it comes to the noise on these fans honestly <laughs> i don't know what asus did with this design specifically i know they probably have some terminology on their website for this but regardless the fans are super freaking quiet i've had no issues with fan noise and even with my 3090 version of this which is the same fans it they're super quiet they really are you do however get a little bit of coil wine on this specific card not 3070s across the board that's just a strix thing for some reason with the power design they chose there's a little bit of coil wine on this guy not too bad honestly if as long as you're playing a game with volume whether that's from a speaker or a headset you're typically not going to notice it unless your case sits right here in your desk right in your face and even then it's going to be extremely minor if you put your desk behind your monitor on your floor or something like that you're not going to notice it but again if you're using a headset you'll probably never notice it 3090 that's another story we'll get into in another video question number two if you're in the market for a gpu like you have a system or you're planning to build a system and this is something that you're looking at or you're looking at that you know five to six hundred dollar market you know is this a good buy realistically it's kind of rough to talk about the pricing side of it because the market is so freaking chaotic with the freaking crypto market crash prices have come down significantly and you can get used ones of these guys for like four four fifty and sometimes better depending on how roached it is from some miner now again we're not going to get into the buying a used car in the miner that's up to you you know tweet your own proceed at your own risk kind of situation there mind you used cards aren't horrible i have quite a few of them and i've had no issues but i've also gotten burned in the past before so if you're in the market here's the situation with this you should not be paying over msrp these in the 3060 ti have held kind of a markup over msrp for way too long everything else in the market like crumbled down but because these and the 3060 ti were such like in high demand because it's that middle ground like bang for the buck performance realm the prices stayed way higher. 3080s have come down to like 700 bucks now, 800 bucks, depending on the model you want. And these are still $600. That's kind of ridiculous. If you can get one of these, especially this model, under 600, that's a fair buy. Ideally, you'd be looking better at the five to 550 range for 3070 in general. Most of your triple fan 3070s in that five to, five to 550 range are going to perform pretty damn close to this i mean within like a few percentile like you know like so small of a difference you're never going to notice it other than this might just look prettier to you it looks pretty to me but that's something where i would consider not necessarily this model because these strix models tend to be on that higher closer to 600 dollars range i would try to find a triple fan version between 5 to 550 and then go with that 
Triple fan is probably the ideal way to go. Again, a dual fan, dual slot is gonna perform still pretty damn well and you're not gonna be heartbroken over it, I promise. But ideally, you wanna go with a bigger cooler just because it's gonna give you more headroom to let the car just naturally, without even overclocking, just boost up and give you as much performance as it can. Question number three, when would this be a good upgrade? Now, if during all the chaos you happen to grab a 3060 or 3060 Ti, it's kind of a stretch in all honesty. 3060 Ti, this is not an upgrade for you. It's a very minor performance jump and the extra money, unless you're having somebody overpay you for the 3060, I don't recommend it. So anything above a 3060, like 3060 Ti and up, clearly don't bother with the upgrade. If you have a 3060, it's kind of a stretch. If you have a buyer lined up for your 3060, then sure, yeah, maybe. If you have a 3050, yes, this is a viable upgrade for you. It's a decent performance jump and you will be happy with the upgrade. If you have 2000 series NVIDIA, you would wanna do 2070 Super or lower. If you have a 2080, 2080 Super, 2080 Ti, don't bother. Again, that's in that 3060 Ti territory where it's not gonna be an upgrade that's worth the money you're spending. Just keep what you have now. Yes, you're gonna get better ray tracing and DLSS, but it's gonna be, again, such a minor boost it's probably not worth the money. Anything older than 2000 series? Sure, fair game. 1080 Ti, you're gonna be again that 3060-ish kind of you know territory to where it's like, sure, it's a viable upgrade. If you're an AMD user currently, you just really wanna to get to Team Green or you were a Team Green user and you're just trying to get back to it because you bought an AMD because it was cheaper at the present time. Well, here's a switch. 5000 AMD user or older, cool. You two thumbs up, you're good to move forward. This is a good substantial upgrade. If for some reason you got a lower tier 6000 series and you're trying to upgrade and you're considering your options, this is only a viable upgrade if you have a 6600 or lower. So 64, 65, and 6600 non-XT is your only times you'd want to consider this an upgrade. If you have a 6600 XT or above, no, don't do it. It's just not worth the money in my opinion. Again, it's your wallet, so you do whatever you want to do in the long run, but I don't feel it's a viable upgrade. So guys, I hope this helped and was informative in some form or fashion or another. Uh, regardless, I'm gonna put some videos up here that you'll probably find just as fruitful if you're in the market to buy a GPU right now. Um, outside of that, again, I have a 6600 XT comparison video coming up and another video for this one following up in 1440p. And then depending, I may do 4K or something. Again, let me know in the comments if you wanna see 4K and some more breakdown of like ray tracing and DLSS comparisons on this one. Outside of that, guys, check out these other videos and I will catch you in the next one.